Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you an application of the shorting coil business and why you even might want to do it. Um, so here's an application. So right here we have a 470 volt, 50 volt, uh, 470 microfarad, 50 volt electrolytic capacitor right there. We have this coil, which we're going to use as a plain old generator coil, uh, sitting on top of a spinning magnet. Magnet is going to induce current in here, create a magnetic field. Um, it's going to pulse off and on, um, and that's going to come into the capacitor. One lead of the coil we got going to the negative of the capacitor. One lead of the coil we got going through a diode to keep it all unidirectional. Uh, that keeps it DC, so no matter what phase the coil is in, we're only going to receive one polarity to the cap to charge it up. The other two leads on the capacitor are going to this voltmeter right here, which is stating 38 millivolts. So we can short that little capacitor out there, and we can see that that is indeed the, well, almost a zero. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this up to speed, put the, the generator coil on top, and then what we're going to see is through regular generator action, what voltage are we going to be able to get that capacitor to? I would suspect a couple volts if we're lucky. Okay, so. So now that we're up to speed, it's going to set this on top and through regular generator action. Regular drag as we'd expect from a regular drag style generator. The magnet is freely attracted to the core. That accelerates the rotor. But right when it tries to um, because it's not shorted, it's going into a low impedance load. That is a load, but it's not shorted necessarily. But when the magnet tries to leave the core, it still wants to stay um, attracted to it because the magnetic field is not doing what the shorted coil one uh, will do. Therefore, it drags it down. And that's expected from a regular drag generator. You want to create electricity? Well, you're going to have to pay a price. We're at 592 volts, uh, millivolts, or almost 0.6 volts. And we're not going to get much higher than there. We might be lucky if we, you know, sit around for uh, an hour and get 7 volts. Who knows? You know, we could look at what the peaks are on the scope. But is it charging the capacitor? Well, we got, you know, 6 tenths of a volt. So now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce another element here. that other element here is a reed switch which we're going to put by that magnet to short uh, to close the circuit and what we're going to do is we're going to take this reed switch with these leads and we're going to put it across the coil. One lead is going on that lead of the coil, the other lead is going on that end of the coil. So now we have a reed switch. So what this little switch does is when a magnetic field comes near this reed switch, it has two contacts like this, and when a magnet, depending on a polarity, it will either push one reed like this or it will pull one reed to it. So what we're going to do is when a magnetic field is by there, it closes it, which is going to short the coil. So look at what the voltage is right now, 0.610 volts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it towards the magnet, and every time the magnet pulses it off and on, we're shorting the coil and we're unshorting the coil, but watch what happens to the voltage in the capacitor.
17 volts. 20 volts. We're actually getting spikes of hundreds of volts. But what this is showing you is when you short the coil at the right time, see depending on where I place it, it's going to short the coil where the magnet's relationship to the core is going to be different. See, we got up to 20 volts. Let's rotate that a little bit and see. Okay, 20 volts. 22. 23. And almost 24 volts. So let's just say we got to 23 volts, shorting the coil and unshorting the coil. Okay, so 23 volts divided by 0.6 volts under regular generator action. That's 38 times, which obviously times 100%. That's almost a 4,000% increase in the voltage that we got this coil up to, simply by shorting it and unshorting the coil at the right time. See, so what happens, So we clearly got up to um, that high of a voltage when under regular generator action we could only get 0.6 volts, 6 tenths of a volt all the way up to 20 plus volts by shorting it. So what happens is if we can time the relay to where we're shorting the coil, see right when the, co right when the magnet attracts to the core you get a free attraction. The maximum saturation is pretty much at top dead center and that's when there's maximum amount of magnetism in that coil and if we're able to short it right at that moment we create the um, counter field which opposes the magnet neutralizes some of the attraction which means it can pull away easier which means you reduce the drag on a generator not only that as soon as that that magnet moves away and you unshort the coil the magnetic field collapses at a very high speed and you get a high voltage spike coming out of that coil which can charge your cap and that's why we went from 0.6 volts all the way up to 20 plus volts you know we got 38 times higher voltage by doing that so the advantage is number one we allow we reduce the drag which means it can run at a higher speed and number two we're getting a way higher voltage in the cap over the same period of time for the exact same generator. We didn't build a different generator, all we did was short it and unshort it. And so this is all relevant to the Cromray partially. Um, whereas you short the coils and it runs faster and so we walk through you know you can put a piece of silver over it and it's going to create an opposing field that repels it. That's just an eddy current effect. So what we're actually doing is we're using Lenz Law to our advantage because when that current is induced and that coil is shorted and it creates that counter current which is basically Lenz law to create an opposing magnetic field that um, counters it what we're doing with the generator coil is essentially the exact same thing that the piece of silver or the copper is doing to the spinning magnet or an eddy current separator at a garbage recycling industry uh, business or whatever you want to call it and so it creates an opposing field which neutralizes the attraction between the magnet and the core so it can pull away quicker you got higher RPM you reduced your drag you short the coil out you get the reduced drag effect and then when you unshort the coil that magnetic field in the coil which got up to the max at top dead center collapses and then you get that uh, transient that oscillatory transient people call it back EMF but that's not back EMF Back EMF is what's causing the um, opposing field um, 
to neutralize the attractive force. Back EMF is long gone when the magnetic field collapses. So you got back EMF, which is the counter uh, opposing force, and um, is only active while the magnet is inducing something into a, a coil. And then after that's gone and you unshort the coil, that magnetic field collapses at a high speed. So that magnetic field is cutting through um, this uh, coil at a very high speed. It's all about rate of change, which means you're going to get a very high voltage, low current spike. And that's why we're able to get that capacitor up to way higher. You know, it's still sitting at almost 20 volts here. And under normal generator action, 0.6 volts. So I'm not claiming to have discovered this. This is just, um, I'm just pointing out a couple little tidbits that I think you're going to find interesting, especially if you have not been involved with this field very long, do not know much about this or these concepts. But that's why the crom ray speeds up when you short it out. There's, there are anomalous properties to the crom ray. I'm not even getting into That's a completely different thing. Um, there are some overunity effects. Uh, Peter demonstrated that in the 2016 conference. Um, I'm not going to go into any more of it, but um, what this is showing you is that this is a shorting coil um, effect. Um, if you look at uh, common magnetos for ignition systems, on um, you know lawnmowers or motorcycles or whatever, it's basically operating the same way. You know you got a uh, flywheel with a magnet, which is sweeping past a coil, inducing current, okay, into the gener into the uh, ignition coil, and then it's shorted, and then it unshorts, and you get a spike that comes out, and that that's what sparks your plug. So this is really old magneto technology is what the whole shorting coil business is. So if you see videos online and people are showing you how they're, you know, getting all these kind of effects, it's one, they're good effects. You can take advantage of them, but understand that that stuff has been around for, you know, many, many, many years. So in any case, I hope that that's helpful. I hope that you see, um, uh, get a little bit more insight into what the Carmary is about how the generator, you know, this wheel spins faster with a shorted coil than without. And if you short the coil at the right time, depending on where it had the reed switch, um, where we're getting the highest spikes is when I was having a reed switch trigger when the coil here at noon um, was eh, pretty much right about, right about at noon uh, to give the maximum saturation into the, uh, the deal. And then the magnet goes away, read switch opens, magnetic field collapses, spike to the um, capacitor. So yeah, it is true, you can have low drag to no drag effects on generator coils, and you can get way more out of them than you, than you normally do. So anyway, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap that up, and we'll get into more stuff later, but hopefully that um, answers what you saw in the crom ray with that speeding up. More to come, register at energysciencenconference.com for the 2018 Energy Science and Technology Conference. We'll see you there.